All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to show you the easiest auth provider to set up and get up and running in Next.js 14. Now, this is just my opinion, okay? And in my opinion, the easiest auth provider to get up and running in Next.js is Auth0. Now, if you disagree with this, that you don't think Auth0 is the easiest provider to set up in Next.js, then that's absolutely fine. If you prefer other providers or rolling out your own authentication, that's absolutely fine. This is just my opinion. And with that said, I'm actually gonna show you how easy it is to set up Auth0 in a Next.js project. And as a side note, I actually have a tutorial if you want to learn NextAuth. I have a tutorial on NextAuth with the credentials provider. So you can check that out by clicking the link in the card above. Now, I've already got a project created, a bare bones Next.js project, and I've already created a dashboard page, which we need to protect. So we can see here, this page needs to be protected. I've already got the app running in my browser. If we try and navigate to slash dashboard, we can see we can easily do that because we have no auth integrated into our project yet. So the first thing we need to do is head on over to Auth0 and sign into your account or register for a new account. Then we need to head on over in our dashboard here to applications. We need to create a new application. I'm just going to call it Auth02 and it's going to be a regular web application. So let's hit create on this. Then we can use a quick start guide and we can select Next.js for our quick start guide. However, before we take a look at this quick start guide, we need to head on over to the settings tab and scroll all the way down to the application URIs. And specifically, we need to add an allowed callback URL and an allowed logout URL. Now we need to add in here for the allowed callback URL, the localhost 3000 slash API slash auth slash callback. And for the allowed logout URLs, we need to add HTTP localhost 3000. So then we need to scroll all the way down and hit save changes. So then we can start integrating and linking our auth0 to our Next.js project. So let's scroll over, let's click on to the quick start guide. And if we scroll down all the way down to the install auth0 Next.js SDK, we need to do this, but the steps just before this outline exactly what we've just done. We've added a callback URL and a logout URL. So that said, we need to install then in our Next.js project, the Auth0 SDK. So let's copy this command here and head on back to our code. Let's paste that in our terminal here to install the Auth0 Next.js package. Then let's head on back to the quick start guide and we need to add some environment variables. Now, before we do this, we need to run this particular command here to generate a random 32 byte value. So let's copy that command, paste it in our terminal. So we can see this is our generated string here. Then we need to head on back to the quick start guide. Let's copy all of these environment variables and head on back to our project. And we need to create in the root directory of our project, we need to create a new file called .env.local, paste in all those environment variables in there. But now we need to copy the random string that was just generated in our terminal and use it for our auth0 secret. So let's paste it in for our auth0 secret like so. So if we save our .env.local, let's head on back to our quick start guide. And if we scroll down, we need to add the dynamic API root handler. So we need to add a new file at app slash API slash auth slash auth0 slash root dot JS here, but we're going to use TypeScript. So we're going to have root dot TS. Let's head on back to our code then and implement this within the app directory. Let's create a new file here and a quick way to create a bunch of directories with a file inside a nested directory is to add a new file and then just type out the directories we want to create along the way. So we want to create app slash API slash auth slash, and we want auth0 in square brackets here, and we want slash root.ts. So if we hit enter on this, we can see the API, the auth, and the auth0 directories were all created, and root.ts is inside the auth0 directory. Now let's just copy from the quick start guide again. We need to copy import handle auth from the auth0 package. Let's copy this and paste it in for our root.ts file. So once we've done that, again, let's head on back to the quick start guide. And it says now we should be able to use the login and logout URLs. However, before we do that, we need to scroll down and add the user provider to our main layout component. So we can import the user provider within our layout.tsx. So back in our code then, within our app and layout.tsx, we just need to import user provider at the top here and render the user provider wrapping the body tag. 
Now we can wrap the body tag or the HTML tag, it doesn't really matter, but we need it to wrap the children. That's the point here, it needs to wrap any children that have been rendered within our root layout. From here then, we're in a good position to actually test our authentication. So within our homepage then, let's go to app and page.tsx. Instead of homepage here, I'm going to add an anchor tag with an href set equal to API slash auth slash login. And the text for this anchor tag will be login. Now it's really important to note here that we need to use an anchor tag rather than a Next.js link tag or a Next.js link component. And the reason for that is because our good friend, the router cache will mess up our entire auth flow if we use the Next.js link component. So if we use the Next.js link component, the router cache is going to kick in and potentially it will show that we're logged in when we're not logged in and it will show that we're logged out when we're not logged up. So that's why we need to use plain anchor tags here. With that said, let's hit save on page.tsx for our homepage and let's test this out in the browser. So let's run npm run dev in the terminal and head on over to localhost 3000. Let's see what happens when we hit login and we're being presented here with this error, a callback URL mismatch. Now, this is a really, really common error and to fix this, all we need to do is head on back to our auth zero dashboard and scroll all the way to the top as part of our application and select settings again. Let's scroll down now to the callback URL and we can see here I'm specifying HTTPS. However, this should be HTTP because we're not running HTTPS on local. Well, I'm not running HTTPS on local, so that's why this isn't working. So I need to specify here HTTP. So again, if we scroll down and hit save changes, then all we need to do if we navigate back in the browser for localhost 3000, let's hit login again. Now this should all work. And there we go, we can see we're presented now with the auth0 login. So let's hit accept here. Then I need to enter my login details. Now I already actually have an account set up when I was creating the demo for this little video. So I'm just gonna log into that account, but you're going to need to sign up for a new account. So I'm just gonna log into my test account here. And there we go. It seems like nothing has actually happened, but we are now logged into our project. However, ideally it would be nice to actually see some feedback and see the currently logged in user. So to do that, if we head on back to our code, ideally what we'll do is if we're already logged in, then we'll redirect from the home page to the dashboard. So we can do that at the top here in our home component in our app page.tsx. Let's go const session here and set this equal to await get session, which we need to import at the top here from at auth0 slash nextjs dash auth0. And because we're using await here, we need to turn this into an asynchronous function. So we can check here if session and session might be null or undefined. So we need to use the optional chain here and we want to check to see if user exists on a session. If it does, then we just want to use the redirect, which we need to import from next slash navigation. And we just want to redirect to slash dashboard like so. So if we take a look in the browser now and give our site a refresh, and specifically on localhost 3000, we can see we're always being redirected to slash dashboard. So if we head on back to the dashboard page then, at the top of this page, ideally we'll have a logout button as well. And ideally we'll show the currently logged in user's email address. So I've already got a default async function here called dashboard page, and we're gonna do exactly the same. We're going to grab the active session if there is one, we need to await get session then, and we need to import get session at the top here from at auth0 slash nextjs dash auth0. Then we want to check to see if there's a session and specifically a user on an active session. So within our div, let's add to the top of this div, if session and optional chain this, we want to access user, then we want to just render a div and in this div, we'll render the email address for the logged in user. So to do that, we can access it from session dot user dot email. Then let's just go dash and let's add a logout link as well. And again, this has to be an anchor tag. Otherwise, the Next.js router cache is going to ruin our lives. So let's add a logout link here and let's go API slash auth slash logout like so. Now, there's one last thing before we take a look in the browser, there's one last thing we need to do and we actually need to protect this dashboard page. So we need to create a middleware file in the root directory of our project. So let's go and create a new file here called middleware.ts and we need to import with middleware auth required from at auth0 slash nextjs dash auth0 slash edge. And we just need to export default with middleware auth required. And this is a function, so we need to call this function. Additionally, there's one last thing we need to do to protect our roots. And that is we need to export a const config object with a matcher property 
Now this can either be a string or an array because any roots that are passed to this matcher property are going to be protected and not accessible if a user is logged out. So any roots we pass here are only accessible when the user is logged in. So of course we need to pass slash dashboard here. So this is going to protect our slash dashboard root. Now, one important thing to note here is you may have noticed already in our terminal logs here, we're getting this warning. It's saying Next.js Auth0 is attempting to set cookies from a server component. Now, this is absolutely fine. We can actually ignore this message, but you have to make sure that we're using this with middleware auth required. Now, the reason this error is happening is because server components can't set cookies but Auth0 needs to set cookies to handle the refresh tokens and to grab a new token via a refresh token, a new auth token. And this actually happens from the get session function. And specifically, if we take a look in our dashboard, it's this get session function here, which is attempting to set a cookie. Now, this doesn't actually matter. We're not going to get a stale login state or anything like that because every route that we access in our app is first going to go through this with middleware auth required from auth0, and it's going to set cookies via this function. So it doesn't matter that we're getting this warning here, and it's actually safe for us to ignore this warning. This warning will only ever display in our dev environment. And of course, you can actually read more about it by clicking through onto the link. And there's an open issue on GitHub as well, I think, on the Auth0 GitHub repository, but their recommended course of action is make sure you're using the with middleware auth required. And then if you are using with middleware auth required, we can safely ignore this warning message. With that said, let's save our middleware.ts. Let's take a look in the browser now. Let's give our dashboard page a refresh. We can see we have our currently logged in user. Let's hit log out and see what happens. We get redirected to the homepage. Let's try and access now slash dashboard and we get prompted to log in. So we've protected our dashboard route. So again, let's log in to our account. I'm going to log into my test account here and let's test this out for our localhost 3000 for our homepage. We can see we're getting navigated back to the dashboard page. Now there's one last thing I want to do and this is a really cool feature with Next.js and that is streaming. So ideally what we can do is if we head on back to our code, Within our dashboard page, instead of waiting for the user session to come back and then rendering the dashboard page, we can render the dashboard page first and then stream the response back for the user details. Now to do this, we can use the suspense component from React. And ideally though, we need to create a new component to handle the rendering of our user email address and the logout button. So in the root directory of our project, I'm going to create a new folder here called components, and I'm going to create a new file in here called user-profile.tsx. Let's export an async function user profile. Then we just want to copy exactly what we've got for our dashboard. We need to await get session in our user profile. We need to import get session at the top here from auth0 and next.js auth0. Then we need to just move this functionality into the get, or sorry, the user profile function. So let's copy this and return here. Let's just return a div with this user session check and the rendering of the email address and the logout button. Now, to emphasize the streaming process here, I'm going to add a timeout. So it just takes that much longer and we can actually see the loading state and the streaming process in action. So I'm just gonna add here an await set timeout, which we need to import from timers slash promises. And I'm going to add a five second delay. So this user profile component is going to take at least five seconds to load and stream in after it's loaded to the dashboard page. So in our dashboard page then, instead of rendering this particular markup here, we just want to render a suspense component, which we need to import from React at the top here. And within the suspense component, we want to render the user, whereas a user profile component, like so, which of course we need to import at the top here from at slash components slash user dash profile. And of course, now we don't need to await get session because this is being handled in our user profile component. So let's remove the import to the top here as well. And the last thing we need to do is add a fallback to the suspense component. So we can add a fallback prop and I'm just gonna add a string here and just say something like loading user info dot dot dot, like so. So if we save this now then and take a look in the browser, we can see we have our loading user info and actually I'm just going to refresh the page. We can see we have our loading user info and this should take five seconds 
The page has already been loaded, so this particular section here, the this page needs to be protected section, that's already been loaded as part of the dashboard page, but then we're streaming back the response from the user profile component after it's actually been loaded. So again, if we hit refresh, we can see we're rendering this loading message, but our page is actually already loaded. And then we're waiting for the response back from the suspense component and streaming then that response back via the user profile component. So that pretty much concludes the setup for Auth0 within a Next.js project.